the Port Nix. So. <laughs>
Not gonna actually make a move here. Dendi actually has to go for some sort of regen though, like either bottle crowing himself, casual salves, or tranquil boots as a result of the constant access of race spam. So that will slow his four staff or slow his mech or whatever he's going for by a uh, decent margin. Miguel's doing an okay job here. He's been, le you mentioned Krogi's been pulling a lot, but he's actually been leeching most of that experience and he's already level four. Funnick not getting quite as much, only level three. So I'd actually say Miguel's doing a better job right now. There's a smoke from Paz and Bucking Mad too. They're headed a bit, only level two on the next session, but he does have his mana burn skilled. Then he forced a bottle crow. He is at 450 HP, but that might be enough to, um, that might not be enough. First attempt of the game on Denny. He's already used the, ast the uh, Astral, and now he's going to be trapped in the trees. Tries to drip the stun. It's not going to connect. Effie Man needed to throw a stun sooner, but he goes on to Kroki, and the first blood goes to Puppy. They needed to blindly stun Denny through the trees. They don't do it, and now they give up two. A disastrous start here for Sigma. Best tree in 2014. He could have just thrown the stun in there, but decides not they to risk it. They didn't see him. He had fog. He was just chilling in this area, and they had to walk right into there and take the tower. Yeah, and then the TP reaction came from Navi and Sigma. They have, we haven't seen many early rotations from them. They tend to just sit in lane and farm and try and win the lanes. I've seen this tree eaten once, but it's. Uh, I think I saw a video of RTZ juking in there too. And as a mid player myself, I'm surprised that I don't know more about it. Seems like an imbalanced tree to eat. Who knew one tree could be so strong? Some people prefer Radiant side as a solo mid player uh, if you choose it for one-on-one -on -one yeah. matches because the fog is immediately to the right of the tower and on the dire side, it's a little bit further away. But with the use of this tree, you can even that match up a little bit more. Pretty next level play from Deadly. Yeah, very nice. And Sigma, well, Sigma, when they don't get early, they're just not that great of a comeback team. Funnick getting engaged one on bottom. Oh, but the Timber Chain brings him out with ease, and there's not a point in Carapace yet. Effing Mad only level three and can't stop it. Now Funnick jumping forward. He wants to turn this around. Goes on to Posse. He's looking for a kill here. The Impale connects on two, though. Navi overextending Sigma, punishing their aggression, and they'll find two kills here. Kuroki getting run down. Big they're just plays underestimating from Sigma. the damage output of Visage and Gyrocopter. And. They didn't really have that much damage last game, but this game, completely different story. Yeah, this is a br this is what Sigma need, is Navi to overextend and make mistakes. Right. They did it. They didn't even need a TP from Abaddon. He could have just Timber Chained away to the tower. And Dendi just continued to yes, really well middle lane. 31 and 29 so far this game. There's something to be said for, you know, running an OD mid. You know, we've seen teams pick a lot of Dragon Knight lately. And, and this is one hero that could definitely punish that kind of pick. And same for the solo mid out. King of denies, Dendi. 29. He's got almost three times as many denies as the Alk has last hits. Yeah. That's brutal. Poor Alk only has one last hit, too. Granted, he doesn't need a ton of farm to still be useful to his team, but... I mean, Sigma already giving up the first blood, giving up two kills. Even the score there, but Navi getting a bit more out of the jungle in the supports it feels. And then when they're also winning mid... This lading stage hugely in their favor, only seven minutes in. I think that it's going to be on Miggle to make some moves in the mid game. They, they really need him to like get a kill on Denny before he gets his four staff, get a kill on Funnick if that's even possible uh, on him at this point. But they are falling a little bit too far behind early. Puppy's this already is level the, five. This is before the push has even happened. Yeah, and once that push starts happening, how can Sigma stop it, I guess, is the big question. Who's going to be like their key heroes? Uh, do they just look to push other lanes? Can they take fights yet? It's on the clockwork to gank them so they can't group up as five. As far as in the actual fights go, it's on Nyx and Alk to set up some really nice uh, stuns and some bursts from Visage and Gyrocopter. Um, but as far as keeping tempo, it's kind of on Miggle because Fada is just so underfarmed that he can't really do that much. Yeah, and speaking of the Knicks, not yet level six. In fact, they are going to give him some farm. Bottom smoked mid. on the left side, looking for a kill on Havost. Yeah, and they hook in. They will find Havost here. Fairly squishy, but he can look to decrepify, dodge the stun. He does it beautifully played by Havost. Now drops a blast, drops the war, turns it around with the Aphotic Shield. Puppy joins the party, and Miguel probably going to go down. What a fantastic reaction by Havost. Beautiful dodge on the stun there. That was a really clutch to crep. Yep, it really was. And he was in a good position, too, so that Kiroki could uh, react in time. 
And Sigma, I mean, the, the thing is, they, it'd be nice to have the Nyx involved in these ganks as well, but he's just not leveled enough yet. They rotate him mid to give him level 6, but, oh, hold that thought. Dendi maybe in some trouble here mid, and now they'll drop a call down. Dendi's been ambushed from behind by the early rotation of the enemy gyrocopter. He drops the ult. He will fall. Good to see Sakshika getting involved and moving around early. We saw, like you said, kind of passive farming from him in the past games, but makes an early move against Dendi, and they needed to kill that OD. Yeah, they need to kill Havost and uh, OD. One thing that they're doing game much better than last game is target selection in their ganks. They're not going for... Not going for the Timber Saw when there's an Invoker yeah. and a Lifestealer free farming. Or a, a enemy Rubik support for that matter. Correct. Puppy, yeah, he's playing very greedy. Level 6 already. And Nyx is level 6 too. He's using it immediately. Smoke into oh the middle. No. Oh no, there was a ping coming out. Did they see him use the smoke? Uh, I didn't see where he actually used it. I think he used it way, way back here. But it looks like they know that he's invis. Yeah, the pings came out immediately as soon as the vendetta was popped. And fucking mad now. Vendetta will end. The first gank fails. Navi dodges a bullet there. And Funic, during the time when there's been all this pressure on other lanes, he's been getting his levels here. Level 5, boots up. Now they drop a cooldown. Big dive from Sasha. Is he really committing to this? Wants to force a TP. Too much fog in the area. Yeah. It did force a TP out, so that's not too bad. And Havos has mech, though. And now Navi, the push. Let the push commence. Not a bad cooldown. It did hit. Oh, down 55 seconds cooldown so yeah I, I do I do like how he's getting involved early yes. and not afraid just to force some issue force the issue that's what he has need. he has to fight a lot more than he was in the previous games especially with this OD getting so much farm you cannot just sit let let Dendi sit back and free farm on OD or anyone for that matter but Navi starts to apply some pressure about him 77 CS on Havos nearly perfect last hitting almost 8 CS a minute Pause level 6-2 with really good positioning from his birds. Uh, and pushing into familiars and call downs, very dicey. Even with mech, that's a whole lot of damage and lockdown. But they Navi may not... Puppy needs another sentry. They could potentially get initiated on by Nyx. Yeah, uh, of course there's always a hook shot to set things up anyway, but the Nyx is a more, I guess, reliable way to start the fights. But Navi will back off. Content just to, to farm on the OD. They have the early mech, and they have the Pugna, and to be honest, you'd like to see at least one tower down by this point, Ben, but the tier one's healthy top. They didn't succeed pushing bottom. This is pretty good for Sigma in that respect, even Sig though they're down. Sigma's just top. doing a much better job of rotating than they have been before, especially the Gyrocopter. Yeah, that's been the key so far, and we'll have to see if the Nyx, the Nyx being level 6 allows them to secure some kills. As far as their Alchemist goes, he's had it. A star-crossed game. I mean, look at him. 22 CS, just a buckler up. Pavost has already completed Arcane Boots and Mech, and the, he's just not getting much farm out of that mid lane. Even Dendi, nearly a four-staff online. Yeah, I don't imagine Alchemist as like a Fada-type hero. It it can be a tempo controller, but it's just so obvious when you're when you're leaving the lane, just because you have to spray every single time. Yeah, no no nasty green stuff in the lane. Probably yeah. no 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 Alk there. And now Funic will look to defend the bottom lane. He's got Chakra, which means this push will be a lot harder. And there is no mech on the side of Sigma as of yet, just a buckler. But they'll still look to push. The tower dropping quickly. Familiars are here. And meanwhile, top lane, the tower will fall. They do go on Puppy here. It pales off the mark. Epimad hesitates, and now he's going to pay. Miguel's joined the fight as well, but they'll lose the Nyx here. They'll be punished for his failed stun. And Sigma, do they get the trade? Yeah, they did get the tier one bottom. But still Navi coming out ahead there. Looting Bucky Man, not the biggest loss in the world there. Yeah. I'm not sure whether he was waiting for other people to TP in, like the Alchemist with the pay charge well, stun. Yeah, the, the clockwork TP didn't, and maybe he's thinking... There's a charge up stun on bottom. Oh, charging the stun and going on Funic. Now the acid spray drop, this will be a kill for sure. Well done. But the Timber Saw... I mean, ideally you want to be killing Deadly, but it's still a nice kill here for Sigma. Saksha has been involved in all four kills, and what a night and day difference between this and last game. We've seen games from Saksha where he wasn't involved in a single kill like 20 minutes in, or right. maybe it's just like one or two. This is such a, a change of approach for him, and really, really refreshing to see. Those are the games that they fall really far behind in, too, when he just Now, the, the exception fight. is when they get the Mirana. That's when we see Saksha very right. active, but it's in his lane. Now he's rotating. Mech is coming closer for the Alk after setting up being involved in a few kills bottom. 
Once they have their mech, maybe we see Sigma more confident to take fights, but still they'll need that gyro BKB before they can really force them. And Epic Mad once again on the move, but there's sentries everywhere. Yeah, Kuroki's sitting in a really nice position too. These trees. Is Bucky Mad just blocking him in? Or no, he's just block him hiding in? out of tower range, I, I believe. Kuroki was sitting over here earlier. I'm not actually sure if Bucky Mad saw him. Level 6 of Madden, you don't want to be diving into those trees to try uh, and kill him with the Look reaction from Dendi. Yeah, and now he's starting to turn it around with an Astral, but no follow-up here. Just a learning shot fired by the Clockwork. But this is where Navi can start to pull ahead, is if Sigma send four or five heroes mid and they don't do anything, you know Navi will have at least one hero farm in the other lanes. They've been consistent with that pretty much for the second and third days all day long. Yeah, they're more than happy to farm Necrobook on Pugna, high level, and to farm up more on OD too. Towercopter's doing okay in terms of farm. His BKB is two-thirds completed as the, of right now. The team's not ancient stacking farm though, and, and that's something, so say, a lion this here you'd almost certainly see even uh, using the familiars potentially to do that but right they do have a stack here a triple stack but it's okay. being taken down by it's, it's only by taking down by fada they need more farm on gyro too the other thing is al can just farm ancients with level four acid spray by himself but uh, is granted is farming the big camp can he pull it from right here like if he walks to here and then just cast and drops the acid spray yeah i think he can pull from the um, low ground okay yeah i i wouldn't know i'm a noob i normally walk right off but uh, here Sigma goes. Epic Mad's going to come into the lane, and they're looking for Funic. They'll start with a Vendetta. Impale's going to follow up. Now a call down is deployed, but the mech from Havos. <laughs> Meanwhile, Funta all chatting while this huge team fight's going on. <laughs> Funny stuff. Bucky Mad dropping fast, getting the life drain. Give him the suck. Havos will. He brings him down. Now a hook shot into Cogs, but Miguel, I think he's bit off more than he could chew. He's dropping very low. Not dead yet. Havos still at full HP. Deploys a blast, it won't connect. Funnick barely misses Chakram there. Man, that these hooks, it's like the hook shot. Oh, backstab from Kuroki, casually strutting up, and now he'll find Miguel. This will be a dead clockwork once the shield explodes. Goes down, still healthy, although Familiar's coming. He's got borrowed time, we'll pop it now. And another life drain from Havos, doing work on the little skeleton man. They still chase Poss here, but I think that'll be the end of the blood for now. They'll settle for some wood to tower next. Wrap around from Dendi too. Maybe not. They'll get another kill with the familiar stuns. Missed time a bit, but uh, it's not going to matter. Down he goes, and Navi take another kill. Score 4-8. to eight. And familiar. Sigma's had their moments in this game, but not enough of them. Navi is off to that explosive start. I mean, that was... I feel like this... What is the heck the wraparound with Abaddon? He was, was just like, where did he come from? That's like the least intimidating wraparound in the game. <laughs> like, what's he going to do? Run at you with a shield? But well, he had a it shield. Was, it was enough. Yeah, and the urn. Yeah. And then he... Deceptively. They it, killed they the clockwork, and then Abaddon, or sorry, Alchemist was trapped into the cogs too. So it actually led to a really nice sequence of events for Navi. After that, 7,500 gold lead from what was prior, just 2,500. You know, I'd really like to see them fighting with the gyro and clock together. These two heroes. <laughs> four indeed, my friend. Oh, he's only got four signature heroes, Ben. I know. <laughs> <laughs> only player at Star Ladder with four signature heroes instead of five. That's our Havost. And we love him dearly, even though he stole my fucking pizza. I'm still Rude. salty. I'm still salty about that. He said he'll get me one, but he hasn't delivered on his promise as of yet. Well, he'll have prize money after this. There's a big difference in between second and third place oh, at this please. Star Ladder. Oh my god. This is brutal. No chance in hell for Gyrocopter. And Navi up nine to four, up seven and a half K gold, five K experience. Feels like they're just casually running away with this game. What can Sigma even do to get back into it? Fight with Mech, get ganks with Nyx. I would like to see them fight with Clockwork and Gyro. Those two work really well together. Like that hook shot on two, if there was a Gyro there then, would have been effective, but he just went in by himself earlier. And they'll go in Havost here. Well, that's a big duration, son. <laughs> Nearly four seconds. This is enough to bring him down. Wasn't able to get the defenses to creep off that time. But no. looks like Navi still trying to pressure mid, even without the Pugna. Navi going to seize the tier 1 mid. And a tier 1 mid for a Pugna kill is space created if they can pull it off. But Gyro comes in, and they'll look to defend this tower. Navi not going to get the tower yet. Called on deploy, but they will just run away. Alk's done. Just gets it off. It Dendi dodges it. Beautiful play. Another great Astral dodge after all the decrepified dodge attempts we've seen so far. This Alk stun's just 
Very frustrating to try and land. Yeah, and even if that had hit, he would have been shielded. And then he just got two familiars. Another 200 gold lining his pockets. Yeah, the pure damage so good at killing Visage. Visage, Visage uh, birds actually got changed. They used to be hit by like Kunkka Cleave as well as Flat Cannon, and then they got like ninja buffed so that they don't get hit by any of that. And they also get hit by Chakram. So I'm not exactly sure. Chakram? Yeah, his Chakram's pure damage. I. I not realize that hit the birds. No, they used to. They, they don't anymore. Okay. Yeah, they used to, and then it was like a ninja buff that they don't get hit by any of these spells that were really popular. Well, yeah, I, I know flat cannon and call down, but that's or, no uh, flat cleave. cannon. They don't do it anymore though. Yeah, which but is I ridiculous. mean, it kind of makes sense because they're physical, right? Whereas chakram's a spell, but well, no, no, no. The way that his his uh, damage mitigation works, it's like ninety something percent magic mitigation. Right. Ninety six point two five magic resistance. So physical damage should beat it out like flak and. Cleave, a Kunkka Cleave, and pure damage should also do it, but they don't do it anymore. Why does Visage need to be that strong? What a hero, even though he's this, losing this This game. cast has turned into like a, a therapy session between you and Isaac if he's listening. Here we go. Hulk shot in for Miguel. They will find a Vos. A great hero to bring down first. The mech already used up, and now Familiar Stun's coming through. Great BKB usage as well. There's a buyback immediately. They've already lost the OD and the Pugna. This fight going really well for Sigma, but Havos comes in. It was now. a combination that you thought. Uh, yeah, hook shot into call down, and Puppy almost got up a huge open, not the case. Now a two hero pale. Funny dropping fast. Remember, he just fought back into this fight, and he might well go down again. No, he's gonna hook shot up and a live. Oh, sorry, it was not him who fought back. It was uh, Havost actually. But in the end, they do decrepify. They continue to chase the BKBs down now. The clock we're getting here, but the stun stand, and they bring Havost fairly low. He might be the one who goes down after a bike. No, they'll end the grind here, but Navi forced to retreat out. That was a really good fight by Sigma. They're having some fight left in them. See, it seems like they're just getting some team momentum in these engagements. Yeah, as, and they're fighting as soon as Gyrocopter got his BKB. And I really like how they did that this game. And as opposed to last game, Luna had BKB, but she got her HOD and kept farming right as soon as they hit it. So Sigma looking to catalyze that they're really important momentum timings. Alchemist with his mech too, making a huge difference. Havos has to stop getting caught out of position too. He's not that farmed. Uh, where that he can just tank with Abaddon, healing him up. Yeah, and to be honest, I mean, my big concern for Navi as well is not not just the fight's not going that well for them, but have they done enough economic damage to Sigma? There hasn't been a Tier 2 taken yet, and they haven't stopped these core items from coming out. You'd like to see, like, at least one Tier 2 down around this time uh, with a Pugna. Or at least, or Roshan. Yeah, or Roshan, and they didn't get that either. They're going Mass Necrobooks again, though. One on Crystal Maiden, one on Pugna. Looks like Dendi is going for a BKB. I think Havos might actually need a force staff of his own because he keeps getting hookshot and cogged. He loves to force staff against uh, Clockwork, even if it's very unusual heroes. Like I saw him go force staff on, I think it was Lifestealer against Clockwork because the enemy Clockwork would just blink in, cog him, and then force staff out. And he'd just be that trapped. That sounds so annoying. So he just got a force staff <laughs> on Lifestealer that game, but not getting one here as of yet. Could see it soon, though. Well, Sigma or. I mean, they were showing signs of life, but it's still a big worry if you let a team that has OD tree farm. That's always very scary. Yeah, once he gets BKB, he's going to run rampant in the team fights. Ooh. I think it's on Nyx right now to shut them down, make them feel threatened. But with this T1 still up, it's really difficult to apply pressure on Dendi. We're going to see the uh, the Loda build on the Gyrocopter. Sanjin Yasha in the making. That's interesting. Yasha, I don't think it's bad. Sage and it, Yasha. It really hurts their ability to take late game, though, if they don't snowball. Like, he's not having him on the Dominator. We mentioned this team can really take advantage of Ancients, but haven't seen all that much stack here farming to them. This is going to limit his economy quite a bit. But it is very good for those mid game team fights. Rocket goes into Roshan, scouts out Dendi. Dendi immediately backs off. And Navi. Not not playing a little more timidly than they were before, I think is the way to put it. Not just d diving head on into enemy towers and the lineup. I don't think the Yasha builds a bad on Gyrocopter. I like the Moosey build on him personally. I think it's really good for chasing people down with Rocket Barrage because even though it's 20 minutes into the game, he still does a lot of damage with that Rocket Barrage, especially when a hero like Pudna can mitigate most of the flat cannon damage. Yeah, I guess the main concern is that it Manta's not useful in this hero at all. Yeah, Manta. And, and Sanji Yasha falls off quite a bit later on. 
it's good for split pushing and it's good for getting out of debuffs that you wouldn't know no, that you don't want to pod your BKB for. Yeah, but there, I guess there's frostbite, but that's you don't get a Sanji Asha just to counter frostbite on Gyro when you already have BKB. So we'll see how it pans out. Could just be a casual Yasha. It's not a bad, just cost efficient item. And they'll go on Funnick here, bottom lane. Do they get this kill? They've got an Impale and a Mana Burn ready, but he Timber Chains away just in time. Wow. Bad luck for fucking Mad. Really bad luck. He didn't even get the creep too. Or Timber Saw did. Meanwhile, Havos just casually <laughs> blessing Roshan. This is going to take a while. If you try to kill him that way. But they'll go in with the OD. Now BKB's online. And with a BKB now up on the OD, you look at Sigma and you you do have to ask, is there enough physical damage to bring this OD down? Nice made by Funny cutting down the trees so that the Visage Familiars can't just completely scout them out. Navi also using the books to take so they, they aren't in a compromising position. Well, Forcing it's still Sigma a compromising position for a Clockwork who charges in. He's got a hook shot. He jumps right into the pit. The cogs are there, but it's only on Dendi who has a BKB, drops the hammer, brings Hero Flow. Nobody's fallen yet. Flak is not doing nearly enough damage, it feels. The Timber Saw has fallen. Dendi forced to turn tail and run. Roche is low. Who's going to claim it? Havos with a defensive decrepit play. Drops the blast, but the Aegis goes to Fata. Chaos in the pit. Poppy dropping a full duration Chris made and all. I don't think it's doing enough damage though. Still Fata stands. He unloads a stun. He connects it on two. Can he bring down Kuroki with familiar support? No! The banish from Dendi in the end. And Kuroki's gonna live. Now the Aegis has popped and Fata runs into the pit. There's no running from this angry burn. OD will combine with the boss. They bring him down. Four heroes dead. This is exactly what happened to, Na I believe it was uh, Navi versus Sigma in their first series. Or, no, it's, sorry, it's Fnatic versus Alliance. The Roshan fight was really crucial. Yeah. The supports on Navi they, played they really get well. The, they get the Aegis, but then they lose so much for it. Mm -hmm. we've, we've seen this before, and it did not end well for the team that tried to snatch the Aegis. The Necro book, too, made a pretty big difference, but Crystal Maiden channeling her ultimate, doing so much damage to those remaining heroes, and that defensive Decrepify, or defensive Decrepify as well as the defensive Astral, really saving Na'Vi. They, they need to catch someone besides OD with that hook shot. They did, that. I don't think they knew that he had BKB at that point, though. Yeah. So it'd be like the perfect target. Well, now they know, and now... I've Dendi did a lot more damage than the Jero in that fight, because, I mean, it's just the... Now he's got Demon Edge. Now he's going to hit a lot harder, but I don't think he had this in the fight. Did you see if he had it? I don't, uh, think, so. I don't think so. I also... Uh, did Jaro Copper hit and die, too? I don't think he did. Yeah, he was the, the one hero who lived, I believe. Mm -hmm. Four, one, and three. He's had a really good game. Yep. Let's see if he can keep it up. Dendi. Uh, now with the BKB online, Scythe's going to be next on the list for him, and... Not too terribly far off of it. Could have it like around the 30, 31 minute mark or so. And at that point, they can instant kill even this arrow. Just need the, the scythe initiation. I haven't seen too much of Nyx. Like, he usually just follows up. I think there's other better follow ups. They haven't been able to get too many Vendetta uh, ganks off. Yeah, I, Nyx, Clock, I mean, th this combo you feel like should be able to just get kills left, right, and center. But we, uh, we've only seen the one attempt top. That's been pretty much it for actual team fight ganks. Finally, a huge ancient stack for Sakja. Definitely oh, needed, he needed that. Be. Would have liked to see it earlier, but yeah, that's a lot of gold into his pockets. Two dragons. Yeah, that's. And how, how in the world did Puppy farm his Necro 3 this fast? They don't even have that many towers. He's been jungling all game. He's 3 0 and 9, but I feel Do like. Do you think Necro needs to be nerfed? <laughs> well, it's always the balance discussion with you. <laughs> you just hijack the cast into like, is this item broken? Is that hero broken? Well, we'll talk about it in a second hey. if we have some time here. They go in Effie Mad. He does pop a carapace and an impale. Nicely done. The aphotic shield's going to remove it. There is an ult available, but he pops Vendetta and will retreat. They've just been doing this th th every game. Last game, this game, it's just Mass Necro Book into, into pushes. I think it's a little too strong. Not as bad as it was when it first got changed, though. Wow, three-man call out. But I mean, how would how would you change Necrobook? I'm not exactly sure. Reduce the last will damage, or re reduce the duration? Make it so... You know how Heroes of Newworth actually did it? Is you can only buy a certain number of recipes for, like, a certain time in the game. Oh, yeah. So you can't... You can't build like three or four necro threes right really early yeah i think one is fine it just seems like once you get to the two three or four point it's just like i can't do anything to save my tower even if we kill all the heroes 
Yeah, and if you do kill the Necrobox, then uh, you die <laughs> immediately. You could increase the recipe cost. It actually got, what, changed? It used to be, what, 1350? 1300? Mm hmm. That's an option. But it looks like Navi is going to go with the Mass Necro Shred and just take down plenty of towers with Pugna. And they push a lot later with Pugna, I think, than most teams do. Most Lucky Mad gets cut out. Oh. They'll be okay. Yeah, it's like if you watch the Chinese teams run Pugna, they'll be pushing the tier. Oh, hold that thought. Hook shot in from Miguel. They're going to try and start the fight on Funny. Cards of Tipper Chain out when you're constantly being stunned by the battery assault. And I think he will go down here. The BKB on Miguel allowing him to pull that off. Meanwhile, on the flip side of the fight, Puppy is forced to run. There's a call down deployed, but Karok up the right way and will dodge effectively. They're waiting for this BKB to end. A boast drop be pretty fast but gets astral. Now the Odeal drop driving all the supports back. Miguel still standing strong but I think Dendi's gonna overrun him here. He's got some more orb shots available. Havos now in the front lines. No, they get three. Sigma turned it around in a huge way. Great defense from them. And all of it set up by Miguel with the BKB just going directly onto Timbersaw. Normally you stand in shock from that long, you'll die, but he was at full health. Yeah, nice pickup from him oh with no. the BKB. A lot of them actually go blade mail too. Yeah, not seen at this game. And our Gyro, I think he's got his MKB, he does. That's a lot of physical damage. Now when he's flax and team fights, Navi are gonna be running for the hills. And you can't decrepify everyone. That was a nice defensive Astro from Dendi. Had he not cast that, the fight would have been a lot worse. They would just immediately kill the Pugna there and then switch to Dendi. But Dendi being able to survive his fights, work his way towards the sheep, will probably be there saving grace come 40 minutes into the game. He needs sheep though, because right now it's without the sheep, Navi's ability to kill anyone, including the gyros, really falling off. And Scythe is what allows you to deal with the mass BKVs. Otherwise your OD really isn't doing much. Sasha is hitting hard now with his MKB yeah. complete, 4, 1, and 5, much more active helicopter. And yeah, they just tend to do so much better when he fights and farms at the same time. Uh, looks like just two HSX there, no HOD yet on him, so he can't do it himself. Navi just defending mid for the time being, and they will deny their tier one, but Sigma me it means the tower is down for the next Roche, so Sigma probably still happy with that overall. The map control slips a bit, and 31 minutes in, it's a, anybody's game. Navi with a lead, but it feels like Sigma with all the momentum. Now channel is done. It's nighttime, and they'll go on Dendi here. There's a hook shot, an unstable concoction follow-up. They've got a Nephotic shield, but he gets pushed back. Beautifully played by Miguel. No chance for him to do a thing, and he uh, will go down. Kuroki shielded himself for some reason. Even if he had shielded him, I think Denny was still dead, though. He could just turn around and force that, and he would have been in a much favorable position, closer to the tower, right. away from the Sigma team. And he actually chose to miss Coil first. I'm, I'm very surprised that Kuroki went with that decision. Well, in the end, they dive deep. They look for some more kills here. The Impale's going to miss from Epping Mad, unfortunately. And now probably just want to back off and take this tower. They flat down the wave and continue the siege. Sigma has been finding some really important kills and transitioning them into uh, useful fights. They killed OD, they're trying to pressure the C2. They killed Timbers on bottom and forced a really bad team fight out of Na'Vi. And the longer they delay the sheep, I mean, Arcopter is just going to crush them in team fights. Yeah, and if it, if it really starts to transition towards late game, you have to say you'd much rather have Sigma supports uh, as well as their solo mid, the Alk will eventually become a beast. I mean, he's a long way from it, but even having heroes like Nyx and Visage, these heroes are going to do more in team fights than Crystal Maiden as well as Abaddon. So Sigma, I think they've got a clear late game advantage with Dendi being slowed down like this. Havos almost has his BKB. Navi could potentially take one of the T2 towers with this next Roche coming up with uh, the BKB on Pugna and probably wow. the Aegis to Dendi. The counter to the Necro books. Puppy showed us this initially, I believe. It's the uh, the diffusal blade, but it's two necro books. Yeah, I mean it's like it's like a sort of counter, right? Because there's going to be four minions. You can only purge one immediately. That gold. You still get some money for it though. You get 150 now. It's yeah. a lot of gold. Well, we'll see if they go for more than one diffusal blade. And what's interesting is he didn't even complete. BKB or Halberd. He just got a casual ogre club, and he's like, "Screw these necro books. I'm going to purge them." Yeah, if Navi can't get any towers during the pushes and they trade evenly on that, Sigma may actually come out ahead in the in the late game. Yeah, I, they clearly have the better late game supports, and I'd say the Alka is going to be, you know, more useful than say like the Pugna as the game goes later. 
Well, before the game, we were talking about how if Navi gets an early lead, they usually tend to keep it, but it's starting to slightly slip away from them now. Only about 4,000 gold advantage when prior it was very close to 8,000. It's that, that one huge rush fight. I mean, that's where it like, the game was just going to turn Navi's way, right? Getting four kills. Sure, they lost the Aegis, but, and they did use the one buyback, but it seemed well worth it overall. But since then, Sigma's found some inner wellspring of strength, and they need it. It's timely because one more loss, and they're out of this tournament, Ben. They bounced back a bit, but they can't feel like it's over just yet. Got to close the deal if you want to force that game three. And they'll look to do it now. Four heroes, five heroes grouped up top. Pushing on the Slightly two. unlucky Eroshian spawn time for Navi. It's going to be two and a half minutes. But at the same time, Miggle does constantly rock a ferret out. So he'll be informed if Navi does decide to. I don't know if Navi could pit. kill it before they get there. I don't, because definitely not. This OD is not farmed enough to kill it that quickly. Mm -hmm. They definitely need sheep on him, too. He's close. Just needs an avoid stone now. Well, Navi? They'll wait for Roche, but now with the tier 2 down top, Sigma. They really, there's no reason to trade. You will just contest at this point. And I think they, they take that team fight. The OD Hex could change it, but until it's out, Gyro will be king of the fights. Is this the closest game that we have in the tournament? I would say so. Yeah. I we had so one too. other closer game yesterday, but it wasn't close. This for me is the closest. This one's definitely really close. Anyone could take it at this point. And it's all going to come down to probably the next Roshan. Yeah, the next Roche, the getting the hex for the next team fight and then using it correctly is what Navi needs to do. And for Sigma, just make sure that you get off a good initiation from, I mean, any of your initiators, really. The, the familiars, the hookshot, whatever you want to use. I think the BKB on Pugna is going to be a pretty big game changer, though. They just focus so many spells on them all the time. Yeah, you can defensive the crap. Yeah, you can mech, but you're still going to die unless you have a BKB to it, dodge that elk stun. It's another hero that get, gets caught by the cogs and doesn't really care anymore. Whereas before, we saw Havosta just food if he gets caught. But there's your scythe. Finally, Dendi's picked it up 36 minutes in. Smoke, and now they'll go. They want to use this hex, create some space, find a kill, and then go Roche. And they actually think Sigma's lurking near the pit, fearing a Navi Roche, but for now, they're not. If they got Gyrocopter, that would be so big for them. If they get Nyx, I think is decent too. Most of the other heroes have buybacks. Puppy's going to lead the way here, but they haven't found anyone yet. The Nyx just out of range. Smoke gets revealed to the south. It's Poss who reveals it now. No, there's three familiars hitting the deck. Immediately they go in. They're going to focus Migo with the Scythe, and he just melts. He had BKB, did not pop it in time. Navi take an easy kill. And they will actually find another one on the backside. Dendi's managed to pick off Epi Mad. He's going to go down. Huge kill coming out. That's two dead, and that should Roche. And a gem. Roche and a gem. What a turn. Yep. Now Nick but Jackson can't really do that much. They didn't kill this gyro, Ben, and he does have a satanic now. The yeah. gold graph actually was still going up. Like Even after that fight, it just levels off. But His the Roche BKB is only at seven seconds, though. And with the Scythe, it's not... If he gets Scythe, can they kill him before he comes out of it with Satanic? Uh, unless it's a really nice counter initiate from Clock, they definitely can. Well. Did you see how fast Miggle died? Yeah, this Gyro doesn't have too much more HP. Point well taken, and he will get Scythe, but the Purge removes the Scythe as well. That's another way to use it effectively. Great play from the supports here. Wow. The other reason to get the Fusal Blade. That's just some really heads up play by And Fata he was there. so ready for that. It was unbelievable. That was like a quarter of a second scythe. Really well played from Sigma. And now do they just go Roche? They're going to try for it. This Roche will drop fast. Casual drive-by comes from Funnick. He's got a timber chain soon. Can he snipe the Aegis? Can he steal the Roche? He gets nothing here. And now they're going for Puppy. They won't find him. Fada's going to stun himself. Funnick lurking on the high ground. Not going in just yet. Do they really want to fight with this gyro having Aegis? Seems like a they dubious fight. They need their whole team fight. there. Havos is still way far behind. 
How are they going to initiate here? They start with the Scythe and Fata. Could be perched off if they want to. Well, actually, no. He's got the Divisible Blade. Never mind that. Now a cooldown's going to come. I heard a hook shot. Didn't connect, it appears. But Puppy's isolated. And now Sigma march forward. But the ODL gets there. There's Satanic keeping the gyro in fighting shape. Now Puppy on the run. They've lost two. Can they get a good trade here? The BKBs are all wearing off. And that should be where the gyro's physical damage and the OD's orbs come into play. The gem's on the ground. Will they grab it on the way out? Poss wants to, but he's going to pay for the gem with his life, perhaps. He's slowed now by the Abaddon as they continue to give chase. But now, there comes another flak. It's splashing decently well. Kuroki's dropping pretty quickly. No, they'll get the kill and make it a three for one in the end, favoring Na'Vi. That's just a really terrible position for Sigma to fight. They, like, chased up the hill here, having go to go that choke and just coming in trickling in one by one and just grouping up for that devastating OD ultimate that could have been worse too they didn't lose the ages from gyrocopter and I think that uh, Sigma wanted to go when the sheep was on cooldown but just not a good time to for them to push up that hill that's one way to deal with the defusal blade on the Alk is just scythe him instead yeah so they need two defusal blades now. oh they could just astral him too. Yeah. If they get two pieces of blades, astral one, sheep the other. Denny's been playing really well though. If he gets a refresher next to it, it's it's going to be extremely s difficult for Sigma to win team fights, especially if he gets a nice scythe initiate. Yeah, Gyro does a lot of team fight damage, but it's something you can kind of avoid, right? If you four staff away, if you're Fog. able to you timber chain out wh uh, or decrepify, potentially Ghost Scepter if anyone wants to buy one. But you can't really do that against OD. He jumps in, he scythes, he drops the ult once, he shivas if he has it, and then he does it again, and you pretty much just die. The ultimate just does so much damage so quickly, and Gyro's damage is in like a few seconds. You can react really nicely, but the OD, OD ultimate is just insane, insanely strong right now. He's sitting at about 127 intel. And compare that to Clockwork, who has 33, we're talking about like 1,000 damage alone just from the ultimate. Yeah, and Shiva's will be uh, coming next as the plate mail comes out for Dendi. So 40 minutes in, it might be our longest game of the tournament as well. And it's funny because we were routinely seeing games go like 40 plus minutes uh, in older patches and older Starlighters. But in this one, it's just been such a fast paced patch. The games tend to snowball really early and normally end by like 30, 35 minutes, but not the case here. We're going late. The gold lead still very tenacious. Radiant Navi, 2,500 gold lead. It feels like well, a lot of these items that Navi have, though, aren't necessarily going to do that much. Like the Necro books seem pretty ineffective against Gyro with this much damage at this point. And a lot of these BKBs are having fairly low durations. By the way, he's gone four BKBs. It could just be a war of attrition and they just try and split push with the Necros, but they just haven't been able to capitalize on any opportunity because Sigma's not giving them any this game. One key thing with Menchi for Sigma is even though that last fight was bad for them, they didn't lose Aegis, so Jaro still had it. And he's got about a minute and a half, but it doesn't seem like they want to use it to break base. They're going to let this Aegis expire, judging by the TPs out, and they'll farm for more, some more items. So now where does Jaro go? He's got 4k gold. Sell your Yasha or just wait for the Aegis to expire, I guess? Rapier. Oh, middle lane. They found Fata. There's a Scythe. This Killing is bad. Spree. He gets blown up in a hurry. <laughs> That's Easy a big pick. fight. He just bought a BKB, so he doesn't have buyback. Havos used this BKB in that fight, and, too. And Roche, uh, Aegis about to expire now. Maybe not even think about threatening the base. They could at least ship away on it, I think, with uh, Necro books. Yeah, maybe not fully commit to it here. Four heroes grouped up mid, and Funic available to TP in, in 10 seconds' time. They descend on the middle lane. Nice cog by Miggle, blocking out those Necro books. Still 35 seconds to go, checking the Aegis respawn timer. Still, yeah, a minute and a half. So going for Gyrocopter, probably not the best idea, unless they can just get in and get out. And Navi are going to back off. So the Aegis is pretty much done at this point, Radiant and they'll be happy about that now. They'll just go back to farming. Funic is also going Shivas, so they're going double Shivas. It's like double Shivas. What? It's a bit unusual. We've seen it occasionally, but could be casual plate mail. Yeah, it's true. Blink Impale off the mark from Effie Mad. He's had fallen. trouble landing the Impales this game, Ben. Have you played Nyx since the patch? It's not fun. It is not fun at all. It is so hard. I used to give people crap on it. I was like, oh, how hard it can be? It is really hard to hit now. I remember there was a game where Mushi missed like 
six or seven fails in a row. It was like <laughs> chat was flaming him so hard. But it is definitely a lot harder. At the same time, though, some players like FY from VG Gaming and we saw Funic in this tournament have been really consistent about landing their impales. Yeah, a lot of props to them. It really, it's a true skill shot at this point, though. Even though it doesn't really seem like it, it's not like an arrow, but... Sigma smoked up. They might find Havost here, farming his own Ancients. Maybe not. He backs off at just the right moment. And Navi continues just to farm. Though it's the next Roche both teams will wait for. Yeah, they, none of them want to use an, uh, use an important buyback right before the next Roshan, so... Who's going to have the edge in this next Roshan clash, do you feel? Mm. If they fight, actually fight inside the pit, I think Gyrocopter will because they'll call, like if, for example, Navi's taking it and then he can just stand over here and then just Gyrocopter ultimate as well as fly cannon them. Then I think that a Sigma is going to win. But if Sigma like pushes up the hill and fights in fog and in unfavorable positions, perhaps over here or over here, then I think Navi can win the fight. Okay, let's see what kind of a fight we get or if we get one at all. Sigma groups up bottom. They push that lane in. And now there's an Eagle Horn out. This is going to be a completed butterfly. No buyback being saved for. But this is a keenly gyro. And he has actually gone ahead and sold the Yasha. Just a casual mid game Yasha for him. But he's hitting hard. And with the Diffusal Blade to remove the Hex, hopefully he gets the evasion. We'll see. They blink and they go with the Impaled. They Found funny here. Now an Elk's done follow up. Gyro, BKBs, dodges the OD ult. Dendi trying to bring some heroes down, but hasn't brought anyone down yet. The Gyro flak doing a lot of work. Dendi low. Dendi almost dead. He astrals. He's still alive. Puppy dropping his ult. Not enough. He'll fall, but now they start to drain. They suck away his HP, but he's standing strong. Triple kill for your Gyrocopter. That was a beautiful BKB timing right as the OD ult descended, and that was four heroes dead in the end. Sigma may have just blown this game open with one clean team fight. Beautiful fight from them. And now they'll look to break the base. They group up, they will focus on the tower. Navi not able to defend this. They might lose another here as well. Hook shot from Miguel. Pushing Avos back into the enemy lines and he will fall. That's another death. That's a buyback from him. But it's not going to help them defend for quite some time. Still three heroes on the sidelines. Is this the end for Navi in game two? Are we going to have our first game three of Starlight Season 8's land finals? And now Roshan is open up too. If it's a really early respawn, it's definitely going to favor Sigma. Oh, another hook shot. Oh, they were going straight for the jugular there. If that hook shot hits, that that might be second lane of Rax's game. Yeah. Whew, that was close. Still, though, a fantastic fight for Sigma. And great risk taking for the gyro to just not be saving for buyback. Gets the butterfly and. I think without that, he wouldn't have had enough damage or attack speed to actually get all those kills in the team fight. Yeah, I think it was really important that he picked it up. He also used his cooldowns very appropriately to fly cannon, I think to finish a couple of the heroes off when they were like super far away. And uh, yeah, the BKB. And also credit to fucking Mad, Bleak in Impale, no hesitation. It seems like he was hesitating a bit earlier with his Impales, but this time he's like, I'm going right now. And that's what you have to do on Nyx. You can't give them a chance to react. Yeah, and you can't let them just fortify up in their T3. The Navi chose to take a fight outside of their base and kind of charged forward and just got into a really unfavorable formation. And that will delay a lot of the item on the side of Navi. Not really sure what Denny was going for at 2300 gold right now. Probably around like 3300 before that. So maybe he could have bought his Mystic Staff earlier. What do you do? You still think he's going to go Shivas, or is there something else you would rather see him pick it's, up? Well, it's either Shivas or AC, right? Well, yeah, I don't don't think we'll see an AC. They have like no physical damage. Yeah, Shivas is Shivas is good. I think Lincoln's would be good too. Good versus Mana Burn. It could just be a casual plate mail. I mean, it's pretty good versus Gyro, but they'll go in right now with Sight. They try and focus him now, but he gets off the BKB, and now Navi cannot fight near this whirling death cannon of doom. Funic on the run as well. He gets hooked. Now focus. Can they bring down the Timber? So he Timber changed directly back into the cog. That's not where you want to be, Funic. Kuroki will be next here, perhaps. Popping the borrow time. Call downs there. Satanic's already been used, but they do manage to bring down the Gyro. He buys back instantaneously. The damage seems to have been done. Two for one so far. Gyro's back, but no Satanic, no BKB, and he's got to run straight back mid. But there's no OD ult, and I think Navi has four BKBs on cooldown. Is this the Aegis? 
This is a super far CM. She was able to channel her ultimate for almost full duration and get a ton of damage on Gyrocopter right before he died. Now Sigma? Roche? I don't think o o Navi can't contest this. They have no OD ultimate. BKB is on cooldown, and they're not in position either. And but if Gyrocopter gets the Aegis? Oof. By the way, he bought back and still has 4k gold, and he gave up a 1k bounty with that death. He's pretty freaking rich. He really is. What item do you go for next on Gyro? Is it uh, Aegis, let's say, in the game right now? Or, sorry, Rapier, let's say, in the game right now? Well, I think you try and end it with Aegis, and then maybe you resort to the Rapier if you die. And, oh, the Rune of Many Winds. The only thing better than a DD is a GG. Gold is like dead even right now, but a lot, of, a lot of buybacks have been spent on both sides and Sigma huge momentum going into this impending team fight. This could be the one for Sigma, the underdogs for sure, but definitely a team that's capable of beating Navi. If they win this game, they're going to have a lot of confidence going into game three. I don't know who Alliance would rather play, but Sigma's making a strong case that they also deserve to be in the grand finals. Let's see if they can do it. With the double damage, they'd love to siege with this wave. At least get off a few right clicks. They do force staff on the pyro immediately for remember, he's got Aegis here. He gets off Satanic Pop. BKB, but it's really only affecting Kuro for the time being. A little bit of flak damage on the puppy, but gets Astral. They're kiting this BKB duration really well. It's now over. The Satanic's down, and I think Sigma just have to back. In fact, they will lose the Nyx on the backside while four other heroes retreat. That was a sick initiate. Force staff him in, scythe him up. Force, they did manage to remove If they the kill him, like, game's over from there. Well, he had Aegis. Oh, he did? Yeah. Oh, yeah, he still Aegis. Okay. Right, but mind. still, still, it's going to be very bad to lose the Aegis like that. Yeah, especially so, when he doesn't have buyback. And, well, Navi just, uh, one of these teams that you can never count out until their base is dead, basically. What else can you say? Well... Yeah, what is Arakop going to buy, though? He's out of item slots. Well, at least with the Aegis. Mm, I mean, Rapier is kind of the obvious choice. Is it? Is it? Don't you remember that MLG game where Havos got not one, but two Rapiers? His Aegis is going to expire by the time he farms it up, though. Well, he's not have room for an Aegis anyway. Unless, I guess he could sell MKB or something. Yeah. But it's 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 so risky when you can't carry could Aegis get, and Rapier. Could get like a Hex. Hex is always good. And they don't have one, so that might be nice. Gets four BKBs. They'll go in now on Dendi. The hook shot comes through. Can they lock him down? He pops the BKB and turns tail and runs. Miguel will pop his own BKB. No cocks here. The quick purge removes the scythe for now. And now they go in. Flak trying to find a Flak, but there's so many decrepified target, Ghost Scepter targets. The Flak's hardly doing a thing. And now the BKB's done. In fact, he almost dies hitting the Necro books. Dropping low, but not dead yet. And Sigma must retreat once again. This is just a stalemate. Nobody can get a kill. That's probably why he's gotten so much gold. It's from all the Necro books in a fight. He just had 4,500. Now he has 6,200. We need a Necro book gold counter. Oh, that's, that's another option is a fresh BKB. We forgot about that. Definitely like the safest, I don't really want to make a decision option as far as items go. Yep. But a good one this game. I mean, we can see what happens when his BKB's down. He's easily dealt with. Just to crep him, there's a lot of abilities you can use to block him down, like the Scythe, the Astral. The Styro only does stuff when he's magic immune. Mata's defusal has just been so instrumental in Sigma winning these team fights and not and, and preventing Saksha from getting dispersed down super fast. You know, the funny device. thing is that Puppy was the, I believe he was the player who started doing this first a few months ago with getting defusal to counter Hex. Uh, we saw some people get it to counter Necrobook before that and boy, is it working out or what? Sigma march up mid again, Navi defending the high ground, hanging on for dear life. As the bottom lane pushes in, Sigma probably going to wait for that before they go. They might chip a bit here, though, at the tower. Aegis still online for the gyro. Is that his old BKB in the base? It is. The four-second BKB. They channel an them, but they think better at it and do retreat. Mata just begging for them to go on him. Come at me, he says. On from the sides, it's Effie Mad looking to break this base open. Tries to find the pick. Can't do it. There's a gem on Funic. But Funic's off at top lane. Now there's a hook shot to fly as well. They found Deddy with an impale. Can they bring him down? Not just yet. And now Funic's going to come back. Gyro pops BKB. They do try and focus Funic here a bit. 
They wasted his 10 second BKB, his fresh one. It's so, like, the only time he can use it is when Nobby, like, get cogged or just like like two three heroes and cogs are just all run at him but it's so easy for them to run in and then just back off yeah you'd love to have like a magnus here if you're sigma someone who can keep them in freaking place that would be very very nice for the end that extra empower damage too but they're having trouble pushing up the t3 just because of the constant chakram use it from funny they do it again the four staff scythe big initiation there's a blanket pail it's not the best though only hits karogi now funny going deep Funky Mad dropping quite low, not dead just yet. He will fall. The Gyro Aegis has been popped. That's two heroes dead. It could be three. Gyro gonna fall again. Disaster for Sigma. Absolute disaster. It might be four. They fall back on the clock. They're gonna lose another. Navi, Ben, but don't break defense from them. And the crowd goes apeshit here at Kiev. Navi, hang on. They do it in style. So they get more besides the kills. The initiation from Dendi is just so ridiculously strong. Both of the times that he's forced death and sheeps is just put Sigma into a really bad position because Gyrocopter can't really run back. He's forced to get defusaled by Fada and pop all his cooldowns right at once because he's already taken maybe like 40. 30 40 percent damage before he comes out of being a sheep, and they can't afford him to have. They can't afford to have him die. Scythe of Ice is doing a lot of work this game. I think we're seeing where the OD and his late game damage is much harder to deal with than Gyro's late game damage. There's so many ways to deal with it. Decrepify, Ghost Scepters. Well, his is also instantaneous with right. the ultimate, too. And he can also, it's natural for him to build a sheep, so he'll almost always have uptime on a hero. Yeah, and sheep seems to be the game changing item. Sigma not going for one. The fresh BKB was the choice, but. I mean, it feels like if he doesn't, even if with a 10 second BKB, he's often unable to do anything during the fights. Oh, they're look at this bait set. They're just waiting up the hill. They have a Necro 3 so that no one is warding up. Someone walks up the hill. Oh, we might, we're might. we actually going to see a smoke from Bucky Mad, but his smoke's going to reveal. Oh, well, he'll be in the front lines here. The gem is on the Timber Saw for now. He's a little bit farther away. They could find an Impale here. Now the fight breaks out. The Impale connects on two. Beautifully done. Migo going to isolate Dendi. Focus that OD. They bring him down. But Funix doing some work on the backside. It's Sakshka still alive. No carry up for Navi. Dendi's dead for 100 seconds. Puppy's going to fall. They could go right Right back the other way. Get back on the roller coaster, folks. Because here we go. They're heading down mid. They force out a buyback from Crystal Maiden. Dendi unable to buy back. 450 gold short, and they're hunting a vote. Should they be doing this instead of pushing down mid? They might get him though. One stun off the mark. The second stun will clip. That's going to bring this rocket in. They're still chasing. They're wasting a lot of time for this. Is it even worth it? They could be pushing it through mid. The hook shot comes through now. They pawed out Havos. Now he's trapped in Cog. He's life draining. He's life draining. He's still alive. He just won't go down. Now Sakshka dropping. They bring down the gyro. Gyro has fallen. A long dive. An unsuccessful dive. And now Alchemist falls as well. A topsy turvy late game if I've ever seen one. Wow. Gyrocopter was unable. To, I, I don't think he was able to attack him because he has an MKB to interrupt the scepter. But Havost, without the use of Dendi, was able to kill Saksha, and that's his buyback too. He's down for four minutes. Well, buyback's down for four minutes. Oh, buyback's down for four minutes. He's yeah. still down for a long time though. 80 that, seconds on the sideline. That's line. ages. And OD, he does not have enough money for BOTs upon respawn. Just barely doesn't have enough but they still should be able to do a lot of work on this mid T3. Navi's gonna storm through mid. They might look to break the base. Alk has fought back. Does Navi commit? It seems like as soon as one team wins a fight, the other team goes right back and wins the next fight. But it will this be the game changer for Navi? They're gonna smirk on the, the tower here. They bring it down pretty quickly. Another blast and train, a lot of damage. This Rax is falling fast. They're gonna get the melee Rax. Navi have done it. They've even up the rack score, one for one, and now they want to make it a two to one advantage in terms of lanes of rack secured. Can Sigma fight this? They don't have Gyro. He's really their only damage at this stage of the game. And this could be two lanes of Rex. It looks like it will be. Navi secure a huge advantage. Navi loses their carry, but Havost is the, the secret carry, the secret weapon. Team Sigma doesn't have one when they lose the Gyro. They have to make a, make a push here. Because they, they got to fight. They have to fight. 
in like the next 10 seconds. No buyback. They're going to have to wait it out. They throw it. They lob it in an stun. Now they look for familiars, but they barely get off the stuns here. One of them instantly dies to a single orb shot, and this will be. Three lanes of Rax, it appears. They need a huge fight to turn this one around. Hookshot comes in on Puppy. It's not doing that much, and everybody's pops their BKBs. Gyro's back into the fight. He should be arriving momentarily, but he's a little bit far back. They've already lost three. It's all up to Sokstra. Who is he going to focus? Still, there's Barrow Time and Kuroki, and once this BKB ends, he could just easily fall to a life drain. He might have to turn tail and run. He will. Hammer drop. Five dead. Navi have done it. They've broken Sigma. G. G. Wow, there was actually a very costly mistake in that fight. They time, like Alp was running in, and Gyrocopter had like about the same time as the unsafe concoction. It was like counting down five, four, three. Same with the buyback. He TP'd in, he canceled his TP, and then his team died. That was a top C turvy game. I thought that Smoke was actually gonna take it. After that one fight mid, Denny was dead for 100 seconds. Ben, should they have been chasing that long instead of just going up mid? Well, when you're a gyrocopter that, that, that stacked, and most of the time that you die.